The 20th century was dominated by one very powerful shape, which is the ever rising line of growth. And it's embedded in our language. Growth is put forward by politicians as a word that is just self-justifying, as if when I tell you the economy is growing, that's good enough. Actually, the metaphor, the image and the shape we need in our mind is a shape of balance, right. meeting the needs of all within the means of the planet. We need to rebalance between those, find the balance of regenerative and distributive design. And how do we create an economy that achieves that? So it's a very fundamental metaphor shift. The metaphor that underlines growth was actually written into a book in 1960 uh, called The Stages of Economic Growth. A man called W.W. W. Rostow, who was just about to be an advisor to John F. Kennedy, the presidential candidate, he wrote this book and the metaphor he put there, my favorite last toy, was of an airplane ride, right? So he said, there are By five- By the way, this is Air Force One. This is- this Appropriately. Is United States of America, absolutely. He said, the stages of growth in an economy are like an airplane ride. First, there's traditional society, and it's just on the ground, nothing's happening. Then there's the preconditions for takeoff. You get the beginnings of a banking industry, industrial sectors, education for work. Uh, the people need to be touched with a certain nationalism and belief that growth is good for something beyond itself, like a better life for the children. Then you get takeoff, where growth becomes the normal condition and the march of compound interest can bear its blessings. Wow, are these his words? These are his words. Then you get the drive to maturity. When this you is all the American dream. This is it? it. You get the drive to maturity when you can have any industry you want, whatever your resource base. And the fifth and final stage yeah is the era of high mass consumption. I've heard this before. <laughs> are, yeah, are we here? it's familiar. Well, we're here. See, Rostow wrote this, the fifth and final stage in 1960, the era of high mass consumption. Well, you can hear it that this airplane ride is unlike any other because it can never be allowed to land. He's literally left us flying off into the sunset of mass consumerism. He knew that himself in his book, he says. And then the question beyond where history offers us only fragments, what to do when the increase in real income itself loses its charm. But he never answers his question because it was 1960, he was working for Kennedy. Kennedy was standing for election on a promise of a 5% growth rate. So Rostow's job was to keep that plane flying, not to ask if and how it would ever be allowed to land. So in my book, I playfully bring him back. I say, if Rostow was here with us on the plane today, Perhaps he too would admit it might be time to land. What would it look like to allow this craft to actually stop always rising in growth, but actually have GDP become a response variable, hop out of it and onto a skateboard or a kite surf so that we can move up and down with a regenerative and distributive economy? Our economies, as he described, have become addicted financially, politically and socially to unending GDP growth. So how do we unhook those institutional hook-ins? This is the challenge. It's not good enough just to say, we're going to redefine the metric of success because the addiction to financial growth is written into financial markets. It's written into, no, into, into politics. No government wants to lose their place in the G20 family photo. It's written into society because thanks to a century of consumerism, mm -hmm. we've been convinced that we transform ourselves when we buy something more. How do we unhook these? Try